This is the coronavirus update for April the 8th, 2020. I am Dr. Eric Byer, and I'm a cardiothoracic surgeon in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Let's get right to the numbers worldwide. You can see there's been 1,497,999 patients diagnosed with coronavirus and 87,717 deaths. If you look at the numbers worldwide, you can see the United States leads the way with over 400,000 cases and over 1,900 deaths in the past 24 hours. Spain, Italy, France, Germany follow the list, and then uh, China comes in, followed by Iran, UK, and Turkey. If you look at the numbers of just deaths in the past 24 hours, if you just highlight those, the United States, France, UK, Spain, Italy, and Belgium, Netherlands, and Germany all are in the top these are in the top eight of the list of deaths, total deaths in the past 24 hours. You can see it's all Western Europe and the United States. Let's go to the graph from Italy. You can see clearly Italy has leveled off and is trending down. These are the total number of new cases in Italy. We talked about this yesterday. And then here are the total number of deaths in Italy. And you can see the graph is heading straight down, which is great news. If you look at the United States, there is 422,369 cases with 14,463 deaths. And if you break down by states, you can see New York, New Jersey, Michigan, California, Louisiana, Massachusetts, Pennsylvania, then Florida, Illinois, and Georgia round out the list. You can see the daily new cases in the United States are, tend to be leveling off. That's what it looks like a little bit. We'll see. That's what's happening in New York and New Jersey. And if you look in Florida, there's been 15,456 total cases with 309 deaths. And if you look at the graph in the bottom left-hand corner, it looks as if we have plateaued, which is great news if we have. I can tell you the graphs that were predicted were going to show us plateauing in May, early May, May 1st and 2nd. But if we're plateauing this early, that'd be great, great news. I think it's a, I personally think it's a combination of us doing the social distancing and our weather down here. I've been saying that for a long time. This virus is very unstable in temperatures above 60 and 70 degrees. It has a lipid layer, a fatty layer around it. Once the heat cranks up, I think it has problems staying around. And we've been good at social distancing. I think those two things, but I don't want to take away from the weather. If you look at Broward County, there's 2,358 cases, which is not a big uptick in cases. There has been 58 total deaths. In Dade County, there's been 5,354 cases with 49 deaths, and the number of tests that we're doing is ramping up. So clearly those numbers should come up if we're ramping up the testing finally, but we'll see if that's the case at the end of the day. I do want to uh, comment on Boris Johnson. Here's a clip uh, from one of the cabinet members in his, uh, in his government. The latest from the hospital is that the prime minister remains in intensive care where his condition is improving. I can also tell you that he has been sitting up in bed and engaging positively with the clinical team. So he's spent the second night in the ICU there and hopefully he is on the mend. It sounds like he might be getting better, but again, with this disease, it's hard to tell. We'll just see how he does over the next few days and follow up on this. I do want to mention a couple of things. I was sent a couple of conspiracy theorist uh, items uh, by the internet, which I find interesting, that's for sure. But really blew me away was looking at the trailer of Contagion. I, I have never uh, seen this movie, and I just looked at the trailer, and I'm going to have to watch it tonight. It looks absolutely fascinating and actually correlates super well with what we're seeing today. And this was put out in 2011. Let's watch the trailer. Ammonia for a new factory. Did she mention seeing anyone who was sick? Anyone on a plane at the airport? No, she said she was jet lagged. The average person touches their face three to five times every waking minute. In between, we're touching doorknobs, water fountains, and each other. Beth! Mom? No, 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 uh, uh, go up to your room, honey. So we have a virus, no treatment protocol and no vaccine at this time. You had a seizure this morning, Beth. Did she have a history of seizures? No, no, no. Allergies. No. As of last night, there were 32 cases. Unfortunately, she did die. Right. Lisa, can I go talk to her? Mr. Amos, your wife is dead. What are you talking about? Some of my favorite actors are in this. Matt Damon, Gwyneth Paltrow. This should be actually a good movie, so hopefully I get to watch it this evening. 
Also, I wanted to point out that there is a man on YouTube named Chico Crypto, and uh, I watched a 20-minute video of his, and it's actually fascinating. I mean, he has a conspiracy theory, which I don't know if I agree with, but certainly is something to watch. Uh, I watched the entire 20 minutes of it. If you get a chance, look him up, because it is an uh, interesting review of what's going on, including taking this movie Contagion and uh, then correlating it with what's going on today. In other worldwide news, uh, Wuhan has unsealed their borders. They have released the restrictions on travel today. And so people are getting out and about. And you can see in some of these pictures, people are extremely excited. But uh, clearly they're wearing uh, masks and they're wearing protective gear. I find this interesting even in this one picture with the child wearing the protective gear, going to the train station and taking a train. Uh, people are getting to the airport, uh, different medical workers are finally able to get back home. So this should be interesting to see what happens in the next uh, few days um, as far as Wuhan is concerned. You can also see it was a sunny day, which makes everything look more hopeful. The weather in Wuhan has been uh, getting better. In fact, the uh, temperatures have been rising and they will continue to rise in the next few months, which again will harken back to what I'm saying about this virus. It is a seasonal virus. It will be disrupted by the summer months, I believe. I've been looking into a couple of things. Of course, I've been talking about the uh, genetic makeup of the ACE receptor and how certain people uh, have more of an affinity to the coronavirus uh, spike protein. And they got me thinking about uh, the different um, uh, genetic studies and, and, uh, and what we're doing about protecting you know, our uh, genetic information that comes out of this country and out of Western Europe. And it's actually quite disturbing, to be honest with you. There have been fights. Uh, this actually was a, uh, a article that was written in the Financial Times about the U.S.-China dispute over genetic data. It was written in 2017. If you look at the article, you can see that people in the FBI were certainly concerned with the Chinese government using this genetic information that they are obtaining uh, from us and through other sources and developing potentially dangerous bioweapons. This was again written in 2017, so a good two, three years beforehand. And what re was really striking was some of the uh, information that was uh, uh, released in there. And, it, and this was one of the paragraphs in the article that said, some experts even warn of bioweapons engineered to kill specific populations and individuals. So you can see this is um, concerning to me. So I kind of started Googling different um, aspects of um, genetic information that's out there. Uh, one thing that I did find out there that was an article written in 2019 in February, so a full year and a month ago, it showed that there was uh, asymmetric access to the use of biological data. So in other words, China was getting more access to our information than we were getting to their information. And this asymmetry could lead to national security issues. Uh, I then found an article in the New Yorker, and this was a very pro um, article for this company uh, that was written in 2013. And it was, a, it was a company called BGI, which is based in China, and it's called Beijing's Genomic Institute. And these are a group of people that are just sucking in genetic data and then processing it and learning uh, the genomic um, the gen genomic mapping of everybody and anything they can get their hands on. And they've been doing this for a long, long period of time, and they've been making a lot of money out of it. And this is interesting to me because, you know, as we're getting mass uh, pieces of information from genomic data, uh, which go goes down to, you know, the root of who we are as individuals, they are able to look at this information and then perhaps sell it or use it for untoward purposes or maybe to make money off of. Uh, but it is an interesting uh, issue. But The New Yorker was very nice about highlighting how great uh, work they were doing in 2013. But to me, I am uh, totally fearful that this could be used against us in a lot of different ways. Finally, I do want to note there are geographic distribution of ACE2 genotype. Uh, and you can see this was a study done uh, in 2008 that uh, there were differences in the ACE2 uh, receptor in different populations. And uh, the, the, this is well known. 
we know that um, the coronavirus uh, attacks the, uh, the type 2 pneumocyte, but it has to get in there. And if the pieces of the puzzle start fitting better and better, then it's going to have a much easier time getting in and replicating and going uh, on from there. None of this is uh, easy science. There's no question about it. But it's certainly a possibility and something to think about and uh, something that I wanted to address in this conversation a little bit, hopefully get some feedback from everybody else. But in the meantime, I want everybody to get out and do their social distancing. I think there's good news on the horizon. I think we're peaking earlier than any of the models said. Uh, get out, walk with your family in the sunshine, do social distancing, wash your hands, and we'll see you tomorrow.